Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach, and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a queer relationship. I'm here to help you figure out what's really going on in your relationship to help get you out and on the road to recovery. I have not recorded in a while. I recorded ahead because we're getting ready to go on our big summer trip that we do every year. And then I kind of took a little break because I ran out of episodes and I was like, that's okay. We're just going to hang out. But it is now June. It is Pride Month. And even though I don't necessarily show up on social media or even in the podcast in the way that I did when I first began a couple years ago, I still want to be a voice for the community, really for any community that I can be a voice for. Um, and there are things that I can't be a voice for and other people are being a voice for me, which is the beautiful thing about having social media and podcasts and all of that that we have these days. But I did want to come on and at least make a couple episodes that are LGBTQ centric, as I usually try to make the podcast really inclusive for everybody. So if this is not you, hopefully if you're an ally, you're going to still listen. And if you're like, this has nothing to do with me, um, this is not what I'm here for. I would hope that you could reconsider so you can learn something about a community that you're not a part of and just open your heart a little bit to some other stuff. Um, but yeah, we're going to dive in. We're going to focus on some queer stuff and, um, and we'll go from there. Before I dive in, I'll talk about some struggles and successes. A struggle is that, yes, I'm on vacation. Yes, I'm having a great time. I can't really complain. I know that I'm very lucky to be able to do these summer trips with my son, but I haven't been able to work as much as I was hoping to and had planned on, so it's been a little bit stressful. I'm going to have to do so much catch-up when I get back, and I'm also still um, still in the process. Um, okay, A couple of weeks ago, I talked about how a company that I worked for decided that they weren't going to pay me after I provided several weeks of interpretation for them. I finally heard back that um, the company had been found like um, that they had discriminated against the deaf clients and that they were liable to pay and stuff like that. And so I've finally been in touch with a lawyer. And so there's still some hope that I might get paid with all that, but there's just been a lot of financial stress, which some people will be like, well, you asked for it. You went on vacation and you're having, you know, some financial setbacks and stuff. And I'm like, fair. Um, but the success is that we're in our favorite place right now and we're able to relax and enjoy our time with each other. Um, where there is a lot less competing for my attention and, and we're having that special mama kiddo time. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is um, late blooming queer folks, which in the last couple of years has really taken off on social media. Um, if you don't know, that was what I was talking about before I started talking about abuse. I talked a lot about coming out later in life. I talked a lot about my experience with that. Um, I think now looking back, a lot of it had been guided by what my abuser was telling me that I felt and should feel and who I was and who I should be and all that stuff. So, you know, if I could go back and edit some of the things that I was sharing, I totally would. Maybe I could do that and say like, you know, this is what I thought I was feeling. This is what I actually feel like maybe was going on without like outside influence. Some of y'all probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but it is very common for people who come out later in life to end up in the arms of an abusive person, or maybe not even in the arms, because right, a lot of abusive people aren't going to even touch you. And I've talked about that quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of reason behind that, and it's just something for us to look out for. Um, and it's not, again, it's not just going to be like bloomers. It can be people who, you know, when you first start dating, it can be when you're straight. It can be like if you came out when you're really young, it can be when you come out late, it can be anybody, but there is a lot of reason why if you're coming out later in life, and by that I mean maybe after you've been married in a heterosexual relationship or had kids with someone or just been in really long relationships, committed relationships with opposite sex, um, or just like been like me, I dated men most of my life. I had dated women a long time ago and then went back dating men. Um, so there's just like a lot of confusion. And then when you, you finally come out, you're so desperate to be seen as a queer person that a lot of times the first person who comes along, you're like sold. And if that person happens to be abusive or toxic, they're going to make you feel like this is what you've been missing your entire life. They're your soulmate. I've talked about this a lot. An abusive person is going to love bomb you. Um, and you're going to go all in, you're going to put all your cards on the table. You're like, this is 
it. This is what I've been missing out on. This is why my relationships haven't worked in the past, which is what I thought too. Really, there's a lot more to it. Yes, that's one aspect is that now I know I would prefer to be with women, but um, <laughs> there are a lot of very predatory people. Um, again, not just in the queer community. And I definitely am very careful about what I talk about when it comes to abuse in the queer community because some people will listen to something like this and spout out off statistics and be like, well, it's because, you know, it's, you're not supposed to be dating people of the same sex and it's because of this and it's because of that. And like, oh, lesbians have the highest, like blah, blah, blah. Okay. There are statistics, there are things, but also you know, my point is I'm very careful about how I say things, but the fact of the matter is that abuse happens across all walks of life. Men can abuse men, women can abuse women, anyone can abuse anyone. Um, obviously we know what tends to happen, what tends to be reported. But there are a lot of predatory people, again, across all walks of life, of life. But you will see people who will repeatedly date, quote unquote, straight people. It's a very toxic thing that happens in the queer community. People are very loud about it. I see a lot of videos on social media about it. Those are the ones I just block right away because it's really just a yucky message to be sending. It's predatory. If someone is straight, they're straight and they should be left alone. And there's people who are like, well, I'm going to turn you you know, blah, blah, blah. You see people who say they won't date a bi person, but they'll date a straight person, which very toxic. But anyway, they'll prey on people who are coming out later or who, you know, don't have experience with the same sex. And it's very dangerous. And this is another reason why I've talked about this before, but you hauling is very dangerous. Moving quickly is very dangerous. A lot of people will defend it. They'll say, I did this. It worked out. I have my wife. I have my kids. We met. We moved in after two weeks. Everything's fine. Good for you. That's great. The fact of the matter is moving quickly is a massive, it's key for abusive relationships. It's key for the abuse to begin. They have to move fast. They have to overwhelm you, your nervous system. You're, you're playing like, I don't know. I'm thinking I played tennis in high school. You are on your toes. You are moving. You're watching the ball. You're like, okay, it's coming. This way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. You're constantly moving, right? That is what they do to you. Rather than being like, hey, I kind of like you. Let's take this slow. Let's make sure both of our nervous systems feel good together. Let's make sure we're like really getting to know each other before we make any freaking crazy decisions here. They're going, hey, here's the ball. Okay. It's over here. Run. Let's see. Let's keep you on your toes. Blah, blah, blah. You're not noticing the red flags because I've got you so freaking head over heels, put you on the pedestal, constantly throwing stuff at you, compliments, sex, you know, whatever, promising you this kind of future, doing this, pretending like we're a good fit, blah, 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 blah. Maybe already causing problems. Mine was already causing problems right away, testing you, doing all this stuff. So you're in that quote unquote tennis game. I love tennis. Let's not make it a bad thing, but you're in the tennis game. You're not noticing the red flags, right? And one of the biggest problems is that as the, the queer community, or at least the lesbian community has adopted this as like this cute and quirky behavior that's to be expected, that's to be sought over. It's like the gold standard of a lesbian relationship is like, move in immediately. <laughs> when I first left my abuser, I, um, I had met a few people or people had reached out to me and blah, blah, blah. And there was actually someone who was like a friend of mine who said a couple of things that just really put me off. I mean, I was already put off to like potential dating for so many reasons, obviously. But one of the things she said to me was, so I was like, I want to be single for a while. And I want to talk about why I'm choosing to be single publicly on my Instagram. I want to talk about, and she was like, you're going to post that. And so quickly, you're going to have a partner and people are going to be so mad at you because you blah, blah, blah. And I was like, is that really what you think? Like, is that really? Yes, that's how it works. And it's not, that is not queer specific. That's people specific because we've just been so taught that being alone is bad and that you heal with a partner, which sometimes can be true. But I definitely don't think I would have healed as well as I have been healing if I had had a partner this whole time. It's just, yeah, you're going to get a partner. You're not going to want to be alone. You're going to find someone. This is what we do, right? And then the other thing was like I had met someone and we hung out and because I just like needed friends and I had told this person right away like this is where I'm at I'm not in a place today blah 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 and she was like cool we're gonna hang out I'm gonna follow your lead whatever she was great she's still my friend and this friend was like so aren't you gonna tell me anything like what's going on like obviously you must not like her if you're like not sharing stuff with me 
And it was so obvious that the expectation was that I was going to meet this person and just like that, I was going to be like, she's the love of my life. We're going to spend all our time together. We're going to blah, blah, blah. And it just really put me off. My point is um, that there's so much, a lot of people aren't going to like this episode. There's so much toxic behavior. <laughs> and again, it's not queer specific, but I'm just talking about this because it's Pride Month. As a culture, as a society, the way that we date, the way that we move quickly, the way that we pressure people to find a partner. I had people sending me other content creators saying, you should date her, you should date this person, you should meet. We as a society had decided that our value comes from having a partner. And now here I am almost three years single. And I think we need to change our messaging. And again, a lot of people are gonna like that. We need to start telling each other, hey, it's okay to go slow. It's okay to be slow. It's okay to not see each other all the time when you first meet someone, to not talk every day. It's okay to have your own life and to continue doing what you were doing and just add that person in a little bit at a time. Like when you're cooking and you're like, I think it needs a little bit more salt. I think it needs a little, okay, I like you. Let's add a little bit more. Okay, yes, this is going well. Let's add a little bit more. <clears throat> Versus let me open the cupboard, throw in every single thing that I have and hope that it turns out okay, right? That's essentially what we're doing. And I think that, I don't, I feel like there are people who, this is so hard to talk about because again, I just, I love this community and it's a beautiful community and I don't want to be like, there's just so many bad people. There's hurt people everywhere. There's people who haven't been modeled healthy relationships like I hadn't. It's very difficult to thrive in this world right now. But I feel like there are people who are like the guardians of the, the yucky things that we encourage as a queer community. And I get it. I understand. But I feel like more and more as a community, we need to protect each other and we need to say, hey, it's okay to slow down or hey, I'm concerned about you, even though I know you're not going to listen to me. I'm going to at least plant this little seed in your brain. I know you're excited. I don't, honestly, I don't know what I'm going to title this episode because I think I started off with one thing and I just like ranted. I didn't even rant. Like, I'm not mad. I just was like, let's cover the whole entire thread of dating experiences. Like I said a million times, this is not a queer specific thing, but I just, I want to encourage us as a community, not just a queer community, but as a whole, as a society to start encouraging more thoughtful dating and slower approaches. And like for me, if I have a friend who tells me all of a sudden, you know, I met this person, we're on, we're on Tinder, we went on a date and I've seen this person seven nights in a row. I might say something like, have you taken any time apart from this person? And have you taken time to stop, stop, like, think about how you feel? And are you guys communicating well? And is there mutual respect? And are there boundaries? Are you starting to set boundaries? Because boundaries need to be set right away. And boundaries can change and, you know, you can be flexible and stuff. But right away, you start developing those boundaries with someone. And I feel like a lot of times we don't do that because we're afraid to. Or we think we might lose that person if we set a boundary. But if you lose that person because you set a boundary and you say, hey, I really need to focus on my work right now, or I have a child, I need to make sure that that's my priority, and we will talk when we're both available, or, hey, I'm in a soccer league, <coughs> I play soccer four nights a week, I might not be able to respond to you until 10 p.m., whatever, are you doing that? No? Why not? Like, let's have a healthy conversation about it. Um... I feel like we could start to change the message a little bit more and change the expectations and protect each other and prevent each other from getting into situations like this. Because again, I remember feeling like it was going so quickly when I first met this person and they had been out for a very long time and I hadn't. And I was like, well, this person must know. This must be how it is. Lesbians just move, must move fast. Um, and I had heard some like rumors about the queer community and stuff, but I hadn't been out, you know? And so I was like, this just must be normal. I've never moved this quickly. Um, I'm just going to follow their lead. And that's not good because look what happened to me. And again, if you're listening and you're like, we did great. We moved in after two. That's good. Good for you. But that doesn't need to be the message that we're sending to people. And here's the thing that at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. If I think of an example here. Okay. Let's say that there's a poison that some people will be really harmed by and some people are okay. 
would we give the message of everybody should drink the poison? It's okay. You're going to be fine because I was fine. When I drank it, my body was like, I'm not like, I don't know. Let's do peanut allergy, right? Although that's a bad example because a lot of people are really fine. But like, let's say we're all in a room and we don't know who has a peanut allergy and who doesn't. But a lot of people in the room are going to have a peanut allergy. We're not going to sit here and say, everybody needs to eat the peanuts anyway. Let's all have the peanuts. Everyone's going to be fine because I had peanuts yesterday and I'm fine. Instead, we're going to be like, let's instead just be really careful. Let's make sure that we have some resources nearby to make sure everyone's safe. And then we'll slowly see if anyone here has a peanut allergy, right? Let's slowly see if this person's abusive, right? Because if you take it slow and you set boundaries, you might have a little bit more of an idea of whether or not this person is a healthy person to pursue. If you can set boundaries and they're respectful and they continue to be respectful and they're not kicking back. Some people say, and you know, there's a lot more education out there now and abusive people absolutely do pay attention to the education that's available on YouTube, on TikTok, on wherever, because they're learning, they're upgrading. They know that people are starting to pay attention to what abuse looks like forward abuse. It's harder to spot. They're going to start learning to behave themselves longer because now they have the information too, just like we do. But you will know, you will start to see the signs that someone is pretending to be healthy. They're pretending to be able to <coughs> respect boundaries and have their own boundaries and things like that. You'll start to get mixed signals. You'll start to get whatever. You'll see a look flash across their face that you're like, I feel like they're saying one thing, but they're feeling another, all of that stuff, right? Taking it slow, not all assuming that we're all going to be fine, right? And that's the message that we give when we say, well, it was fine when I moved in with my, I, you know, I met this person two weeks later, we moved in together, we're married, blah, blah, blah. That's the message that we're sending. That's beautiful. And I'm happy for you. And that's a story that you can share with people. I'm not saying that you can't post that on social media. If that's your story, that's great. There's a time and space for that. And we want to be able to lift that up. We want to be able to lift up healthy queer relationships that can be models for other people. But it's also just like, again, when you just constantly, if someone says you hauling can be dangerous and you say, well, it wasn't for me. Peanuts can get people off of the earth, right? <laughs> and it's a very weird example. It would not be good if we said everybody should eat peanuts all the time or everyone should eat shellfish all the time. And then people are getting sick or like very ill or like leaving the earth because of it, right? It's like, hey, some people have an allergy. Some people are abusive. Some people are to be at arm's length. Really, everyone should be kind of at arm's length for a while and then you can slowly be like, okay, all right, you're safe. Just like when you have a baby, you don't give your, like, you give your baby, like, you expose them to things. Like, okay, okay, this kid doesn't seem to have a peanut allergy, right? You slowly, you're not just like, huh, let's bathe you in peanut butter. I don't know. I hope this all makes sense. I am just kind of rambling here and I'm talking about peanuts, but I, the whole point of this episode is let's work together. Let's Let's keep our community safe. We're out here and I mean, there are there are good people and there are yucky people in every community we have. But when we're out here trying to protect trans children and trans adults and saying, you know, if if there's anyone in our community being harmed, we're all being harmed. We need to take care of these people. We need to lift these people up. We're, you know, we're looking out for our gay friends. We're looking out for our bi, our bi friends are constantly being overlooked invalidated blah 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 we also need to look out for each other and say let's have healthy relationships let's slow down let's start like yes we have our jokes yes we have our whatever but let's let's check in with each other let's try to learn together what healthy can look like i think a lot of people don't want to know i didn't want to know until i did i didn't want to know i didn't know that i didn't know and i didn't i wasn't like should i should I stop and learn about this? I feel like we don't want to know until we do. And a lot of times it isn't until you're at rock bottom and you've been abused maybe more than one time. And you're like, I, I'm not doing this again. And that's when you want to learn. But please don't be afraid to learn more about the signs of coercive control. Learn more about some of the ways that we can just do better as a whole. Again, not very specific across the board. <coughs> This was a lot of babbling. If you listened, thank you. <laughs> I will finish this up. Go do something nice for yourself. Go drink some water. Hopefully I'll be back next week with more.